Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at timers. At, in this video, we are going to do another example program where we do a timer overflow that we use to trigger an interrupt, and then in the interrupt service routine, we'll toggle LED1. But this time, what we're going to do is we are going to use SM clock. Now, this stands for uh, Submaster Clock. And this is a one megahertz internal clock that is provided on the MSP430 FR2355. And the, what we're going to do here is we'll just leave the divider ratio the same, uh, or the divider at one for the first two stages of dividers. So that'll allow one megahertz to actually drive the timer. And we'll use timer B0, and we'll leave it at its 16 bit value, its 16 bit length. And then we need to put it in continuous mode so that it will go up to FFFF and then roll over and then continue counting forever. And every time it rolls over, it generates an overflow. And this overflow tracking circuit will raise the flag. And we, if we enable the interrupts, it will trigger an interrupt and we can execute our interrupt service routine. Okay, so we always want to calculate the time that happens for our event. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the period of the clock times the number of counts, and that'll give us the time. So in this situation, we find the period of the clock by doing one over the frequency of the clock, which is one over megahertz, one over one megahertz, and that's what drives the clock. And then we multiply it by the number of counts. In this situation, we have a 16-bit counter, so that's going to be 2 to the 16. And if we do that calculation, we are going to see a timer overflow every 65.5 milliseconds. Now this is really fast, okay? So this is flying. However, it's still slow enough that we can see it with the human eye. So we'll see the LED one really flashing, but we should we we will be able to see it, okay? All right, so let us fire up a project and let's get coding. Uh, as always, I am going to start from scratch on every one of these examples so that uh, number one, if you are following along, it is just going to reinforce everything we're talking about give you practice typing them in and solidify <laughs> your understanding of all this stuff. And also if you're not following along every video, we, you know, you don't want to just jump in and watch me paste in a bunch of lines of code and be done in two seconds because you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I created a new project, as always, ASM, timers, SM clock overflow, okay? I get my main.asm, which is blank, and now we're going to come down here. And we're going to start our initialization. Okay, step one, let's set up the LED1. So I'm going to do set uh, LED1 to output. And just got to remember that that is on port 1 bit 0. And so come over here, we're going to do a bit set, 8-bit uh, operation, since these are, we're operating on the ports as 8-bit ports. And we use the mask provided for us, the bit mask provided for us in the... Uh, header file, and that's port 1 DIR. So by setting that bit, I went ahead and made port 1 bit 0 an output, which was the LED. Let's go ahead and set its initial value to a 0 so that when we fire this thing up, we know its state. So I just drive a, I drive a 0 to that bit. So we'll go clear LED 1 initially. All right, and then that's really all the I.O. So let's go ahead and turn on the I.O. system on the MSP430. So I'm going to do that by clearing the pound lock low power mode 5 bit in the power mode 5 control register 0. Okay, so this is turn on digital I.O. Okay, now we're sitting there and we're feeling pretty good. It's time to set up the timer. Okay, and I didn't do my comment there, but we'll do set up LED and we'll set up the timer. Okay, as always, the recommended programming sequence is uh, they recommend right clearing the timer, which will flush out the counter length and the mode control and the counter value by writing a one to this bit right here, TB clear, which is in our main control register, which is TB zero control. So I'm gonna write a one to that and that's gonna clear everything out. So I'm gonna do a bit set, and now we're doing 16-bit operations because these are 16-bit control registers, and I do pound TBCLR, and that's in the TB0CTL 
register. Okay, so what that does is that clears, let's, it actually resets the, the timer. And then, and then we're using timer B0. We could have chose timer B1, but we're just using timer B0. Why not start at zero? And now we're ready to start configuring it. So let's go ahead and we're going to configure the clock to use uh, SM clock. And so we go into these bits here, TBSSEL. And luckily, if I go bitset.w, they have provided another bit mask that is descriptive. And this is called TBSS. El underscore underscore sm clock. Now that mask right there, <clears throat> what it does is it's a mask that is going to set the most significant bit of these two bits, and and I found that by going over into the include file. So if you, you want to find that thing, you got to go. Remember, you got to go into this includes, and then you open up this monstrous uh, include file folder. <laughs> and then you go through there. I won't do it because it takes so long, but that's where you find all these things, right? So it's it's way, way down here. MSP 430 FR 2355. Anyway, so these these masks are in there and we know what, where to find them. So TB, and then the, and these are bits in the TB0 CTL register. So this is going to be choose SM clock, and I might as well put one megahertz in there so I remind myself as source. And then remember the dividers, we're going to leave divider at its reset value state, which is divide by one, divide by one. So there's no impact. So now I've got my clock in there. Now we got to put the timer in continuous mode counting because that's the mode that continuously overflows up to its max value and back. So I got to do a bit set. And again, there I grabbed this very handy bit definition out of that the header file, which is called MC and it's contin, contin, in you us <laughs> and then we go uh and then tb0 ctl and what that does is that that and that ain't spelled right is it continue how do you spell continuous c o n t i n u o u s okay, so that's put timer into continuous mode all right life is good and that's it Okay, so now the timer's up and running. So now let's do this. Let's go uh, set up our queue. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and bit set. Let's do the local enable. So this is now a same thing. Uh, I go grab the mask and it turns out to be TBIE and that's in the TB0 CTL register. So this is going to be local enable for overflow IRQ. And then I got to do the global enable. So I do my E-I-N-T, E-I-N-T, and that is global enable, and that's for maskable IRQs. So that allows any maskable interrupt that's available to, to go. And now let's clear that flag. So I want to make sure that I, even though I know it comes out of reset cleared, I just, I love clearing this flag first. So I'm going to clear it. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit clear. I'm going to make sure that that TBIFG flag is cleared when we start into our main loop. And, and yeah, that's just how I do it. I also like typing it in the first time because then I never have to. I can copy and paste it when I get into my service routine. So I'm going to clear flag. <laughs> so we'll call it. We'll give it overflow flag. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I've got, I've set up the LED. I've set up the timer. I've set up the IRQ and I might have a typo in there and I'll find that when I compile my main program is going to do nothing but just main jump main and I should be ready to go okay I can check through this if TB0 we'll let the compiler find it all right let's do an interrupt service routine okay so I'm going to grab a comment header and remember the interrupt service routine is simply going to sit uh, it's just going to be instructions that sit right after the instructions from the main program and these are going to be interrupt service routines and let's call this something descriptive uh, I always start with ISR but you don't have to and let's go TB0 overflow and what are we doing in here well we're gonna toggle LED 1 and I can do that using my fancy exclusive or operation 8 bits because we're acting on the ports as 8 bits okay and then I'm gonna do it's pit bit 0 and then that's P1 out when I exclusive or that with that mask, it toggles LED one. And then I got to remember to clear my flag, which luckily I already typed in up here. Boom. 
Type that right there. And then finally, I return from interrupt, and I got my interrupt server scheme. Now, I'm ready to almost go, except that when this interrupt fires, it needs to go down to the vector table and grab the starting address of my interrupt server scheme. And so I need to initialize the interrupt vector. And if you remember, the timer overflow flag for timer B0 is in a section called dot int 42. Okay, so that is the timer B0 overflow vector. All right, and I looked that up in the in the table from the in the book of the data sheet. And then I just do a dot short and I go ahead and do boom. And there we have it. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this thing. Let's assemble it and we'll see what kind of typos we get. Okay, we had one typo. So let's go find where that one. And so what is this thing right here? Oh, look at that. Yeah, don't, you can't have that, uh, can't have that little guy. I don't know about that little guy. <laughs> Gotta get rid of that guy. So let's go ahead and uh, let's try this again. Here we go. Now it's feeling a lot better. It's feeling a lot better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there it goes. Okay, so I got my board plugged in and I have my stopwatch here, but. You know, I don't know. This is going to go pretty fast. Let's just see if we can run this and see if it works. And this will be going really fast. Oh, <laughs> boom. There it is. There it is. Look at that thing. That is flashing, right? I don't even know why the stop stoplight doesn't help. So that's like going on and off, I don't know, eight times a second. I mean, if you think about uh, 65, so it's on for 65, off for 65. So that's so it's on and off in 125. And that's about, yeah, so it goes on and off eight times per second. So <laughs> we did it. All right, that's awesome. And we did that because we used SM clock, which is pretty fast. But if we drive a 16-bit counter, it still takes 65,000 counts to, to roll over and actually get the, uh, <laughs> get the interrupt to fire. All right, awesome. We did it. Congratulations. And that is it. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see it.